So what are you painting there? Is it going to be like the base for the terrain that you start with a black? Is that what you Yeah, you start with a black for the shadow and stuff like that. You create a black. And then you um, come back with your other colors when this is dry. And then if you want to come back and add rocks and stuff like that in here to break it up, which I'm going to do. I'm not going to leave it like this right here. I mean, there'll be quite a few layers on this before it's all done. Yeah, how long is it going to take for that to dry before you can go back and do something else on it? Uh, not that long. And this uh, is just acrylic craft paint, right? Yeah, this is just a, this stuff right here. It's just cheap apple barrel. Yeah. Uh, I tried the Dollar Tree special paint, but that stuff Too doesn't cheap. work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you go and put it on there and it just, and then you, if it gets wet at all, whatever you put on the top of it just washes right off. The whole thing just washes off. The color, the base color washes. The base color yeah. takes everything else on the top off. Yeah, so. Not enough pigment or something? Yeah, something. I don't know what it is about it, but if something's not right about it. Yeah, but I mean, that bottle you have there probably costs, what, three bucks? Right. And it's a big bottle. Right. But black is what you put down because that gives you your shadow color. That's how you get all the, the shadows and stuff. Even in this stuff here, you get So you started with black uh, on these other parts here? Yeah, yeah. The mountains and everything have, have black underneath Trees, first. all that stuff? Yeah, the tr well, the trees are just a combination of black and green. Well, I was thinking about that tree line in the back there. Oh, yeah, it's got the black white. in there, too. Yeah, all right. So that's how you get your... Right. These, these are your future shadows. Right. That's what they are. Yeah. And it's... Uh, if you're going to do a... Like, if you're going to do a rock... If you want to do a rock, then you just come here and... The kind of rocks I'm doing anyway right now. What is that? Is that raw sienna? No, it looks like raw sienna. It's very close. It's a, it's called a nutmeg. I call oh, okay. it poor man's raw sienna. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. If it's true raw sienna, the price is twice as much. Right, exactly. What are you mixing it with, a little white? Yeah, mixing it with a little white. You yeah, so the key is you got to make all these custom colors, huh? Yeah, you can come in there and make a rock like so. Even though the paint wasn't dry. Yeah, you can make one like that right there. You come back, come back on the top here. So you were counting on a little bit of wet paint to get some of sometimes, that? Sometimes, sometimes I don't, you know, sometimes it's too late and you can't do anything. And then you try to shadow the other side of it like that. Yeah, and yeah, that's, all right. It's just a quick, it, 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 sometimes it's better to let it dry, sometimes it's not. It just depends on what you're, what you're trying to do here. But. You can get all kinds of effects by... So these foreground rocks are making a little more brownish as opposed to gray? Or are we going to mix... Yeah, well, this is kind of the color of the rocks on the on the, on my scenery, so it's kind of like it's kind of got to... It's got to have to match somewhat. Uh -huh. you know I mean? It's going to have to match somewhat to be, you know... But you have to put some rocks in here, otherwise it'll be too much. It'll, it'll overpower the scene with too much... Uh, Too much terrain? Yeah, just not enough, well, not enough terrain sticking out. It'll be all, you know, all one thing, and I don't really want to do that. I really want to have... Uh, so these rocks that we're looking at behind the trees, right next to the water, they started out the same way, and you put some of those lighter highlights on them? No, they were, it was dry when I put them on. Mm -hmm. And they, ha they have a little bit of yellow in them. Yeah. Okay, I'll probably, I may come back and add a little yellow to these. Just a little bit of sunlight reflecting off the top of the rocks? Right, so, yeah. Okay. No, I'll probably... Do some other things to these eventually before I'm satisfied with them. But you can see the black is already starting to dry. Yeah, yeah. And stuff like that. And that's how you get the basic. So you get, that could sit for a half an hour and you'd be able to put another color on top of right. it without too much blending. All right, so you are, um, yeah, so you're blending. So in that case, you decided to go ahead and, uh, and put the rocks on while the paint's still wet. Right, mm -hmm. right. And if I want to change it when they're dry, I can come back and change it with highlight it, dry brush some colors in there. You can even use a pencil. You can use a regular, you know, pencil to go in and highlight the rocks and stuff like that. You can do all kinds of... It's like a number two pencil? Yep. Soft lead? Yep. Really? So you can go in there and do all kinds of shadowing and stuff like that. Or you can buy shadow art pencils and do stuff, make them more detailed, the rocks more detailed and stuff. So it's a lot easier than trying to go in there with a little brush and trying to, you know, trying to paint that in because it, that's when it gets to really, really aggravating. Now, speaking of brushes, I'm surprised that your brushes look pretty big for all of this, huh? 
Well, I got a whole bunch of small ones here too. So when you go back and do more detail, yeah, you they go do to the those? do the like the pine trees and the detailing. Yes, yeah, so I got a bunch of just small ones here. Like that trunk line down the middle of the pine trees is he's doing that with a small brush. Yeah, that's done with a fan brush. Yeah. All right. One of these guys right here. Oh yeah. yeah that's what that's done with. So yeah, I got a whole bunch of small. Yeah, so ones. the fan brush allows you to come up with not a. A, a complete line, but just looks like uh, a broken line. We've got some of the branches showing through, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, trunk. It also works good, great for aspens, because aspens have that bark already that's peeling and stuff, and you can just sit there with a fan brush and dab it, and it, it works really good. Yeah, I know you painted about 10 miles of that stuff on John Brennan's layout, <laughs> so it must be relatively time efficient, right? <laughs> Yeah. Maybe like Leonardo da Vinci, you know, spending... Uh, yeah, you know. John Brennan's. I learned a lot from painting his. I wish I could go back and redo his because I'm yeah. a lot better now than I was when I did it. It looks good, though. I mean, it's but it's a he's, long backdrop. He's happy with it. Oh, yeah. It's, I, I go back and say, oh, I could fix that and make this better and that and that. Uh -huh. you know? But it's also harder now because all the scenery's been done in front of it. It's like doing, when I did that one over there, the scenery's all done, so it's a lot harder to... Right. It's a lot harder to do it now, so, you know. But uh, I still like to go back and do Don't something. Don't we all? <laughs> yes. You yeah. know how it is in modeling. You get to be, you say, oh, I go back. I could fix that building and make it better than it was when I did it. You yeah, know? before I started taping it, as you said a minute ago, one thing you learned is don't be afraid to cover up something you've already done. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Especially true in this stuff. You definitely want to have it where you can go back and change it and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm sure we look at artists that do like portraits or scenes or whatever for framing. There's a lot of changes are made when they're using watercolors, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. They do. Interesting. Like I said, Bob Ross was notorious at covering stuff up he did. <laughs> How long do you think it's gonna take you to complete this piece? Oh, I uh, probably got about 16 to 20 hours left on this one. Uh-huh. How many hours in it so far? Uh, about six, probably. All right. So, so it's basically somewhere between 24 and 30 hours. Yeah. Total. This one, yeah. Yeah. You could pull an all-nighter and do it like in one period of time. I thought about coming up here and doing that very thing. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couch right over there. Uh-huh. There you go. Yeah. So I really thought about doing that. I thought about coming over on a Sunday and just spending all day here doing it. Well, I mean, is there such a thing as like getting in the groove, you know, where yeah. you're... Uh, you know, as opposed to starting and stopping. Right, because I have to stop now and go back to work, and then this afternoon late, go back to work, and I can't stay here. I'd like to stay here until 7 at night or something. Right. So, but I can't do it. All right. So. Well, it's looking great, John. All right, thank you. Hope it turns out that way. We'll see. <laughs>